Okay, that's quite a solo to play. It takes a lot out of me. I always feel like I just uh, ran around the block or something. It's like my heart gets pumping. I start sweating a little bit. That's what I love about Stevie Ray Vaughan's playing. I always consider it kind of like a heavier metal version of blues, if you will. And so I was thinking about the eight ways in which you could uh, maybe diminish the solo a little bit. And I've done this in the past before. I've committed all eight of these that I'm about to talk about. And uh, I found that over the years, it took a lot of little details to finally get it to the point where I'm pretty happy with it. There's still a lot of work that I have to do, but I'm getting closer every day. So I kind of hinted at the very first thing you could do to ruin this solo. It's not being aggressive enough. Sometimes when I thought of blues before, I thought of kind of laid back, playing a lot of emotion. This one has the emotion, but it's more of a attacking type of sound. So right off the bat, when you're climbing those strings, if you're doing it sort of in a weak way, it just doesn't have the same feel. <laughs> See, it just feels really lazy. I guess that's the best way I can put it. When I did it in the video, I really went to attack it. So you gotta have that edge, kinda have to have that a bit of aggression when you do it, and it starts to really grab the beat in a more fierce way. So you can already tell, just by plucking a little bit harder and giving it some more energy, it already sounds a little bit more like Stevie Ray Vaughan. One mistake I used to make is I didn't realize when you're doing these double stops, these slides, that a lot of the times they start before the one beat. So I used to go like this. And I'd start on the down beat. And if you listen to Stevie throughout this song, he starts these slides just before the one beat, um, sometimes even on the four beat. So he'd be like, one, two, three. So watch out for that, because that can really take away from the feel if you're doing everything on the down beat. It seems to become a little more predictable. Here's something that took me decades to learn. As he's climbing in the beginning, if you watch him live, he does a downstroke to start off, and then he's just doing these upstrokes, which I found very difficult to do. Because as a guitar player, I love letting gravity do half the work. I can be a little bit lazy. So I'm really used to doing downstroke. Feels great to me. Plus playing a lot of metal, a lot of Metallica, I'm used to downstroking. So doing this upstroke thing really threw me. And I found out why he does it though, it sounds a lot better. It just has a different tone when you go from the high strings to the lower strings, this direction. And so when you go like this, here it has sort of like a little bit of a reverse rake sound to it. Now you're not gonna be playing it that slow when you're going that fast, but you still get that effect, it's just a little bit quicker. The upstrokes are gonna add an element of attack that you don't quite get when you do downstrokes. Listen to the difference. Now speaking of downstrokes, I've seen people do this before and I'm guilty of it. When you're climbing and doing this double stop, it's really easy to forget that you have to leave the high E string open and it has to come through. So if you're doing downstrokes, it's kind of easy to forget. I'll just use less gain so you can really hear everything. Sounds good, but it's not the same unless you add that open E string. Now I'm kind of talking like I'm in standard tuning. Just keep in mind when I say E, I actually mean E flat because he's half stepped down. So watch as you add this open E string to everything and you climb, you get this great dissonance. I'm going to start with downstrokes. especially there. Now imagine doing your upstrokes, these are all coming together now, you hear that E string first whenever you end up hitting it, so it kind of adds even more to it. It's funny, when you play it all by itself, it can sound very dirty and kind of rough but thrown into the context of the song and it fits perfectly. So when I'm here at the 15th fret bending, I use my pinky, I believe he uses his ring finger. Do not underbend that because it really takes away from what I think is the peak of that solo. So you don't wanna go like this. If you saw my eight ways to ruin a David Gilmore solo video, you, a lot of people mention that underbending was the worst part of it all. And I tend to agree because if it doesn't quite hit that note, it's just not the same, and your ear's focusing way too much on how it sounds wrong, than uh, just taking in the impact of the solo. So really watch that bend in particular. Watch all of them, but that one sticks out the most, so keep an eye on that one especially. Now the better you get at guitar, the more you start to realize the value of micro bends, and they come in at some weird times. Sometimes you're not expecting them. One place that it's kind of obvious once you play this long enough 
is at the very end, the pentatonic walk down. If you go like this, it's okay. It sounds kind of like you're practicing a scale. That's the problem. Now, if you add a little microscopic, we'll call it a quarter step bend on each of the notes as you're walking down, not the open strings, obviously. What? Listen to the difference. Now, I don't put them at the last few notes, but as I'm climbing down the third fret here, I give it a little bit of a bend before I do the open string. Same with the next string. And the next string. This was a big eye opener as well. Vibrato. So we have two types of it in this song, kind of like we did for the Gilmore. We have the finger vibrato, but we also have the trembar vibrato. And uh, I recently just picked up this John Mayer signature Strat. I love it because he was a huge SRV fan and you could tell he brought a lot of that into his own guitar. But uh, I just found the trembar. I didn't think it came with it. So I found it today and I was excited because this song at the end you need it. So don't forget, once you hit this E7 sharp nine chord, the Hendrix chord I call it. <laughs> Kind of go nuts with the bar you know stevie sometimes does very articulate whammy bar stuff but in this case he just sort of goes crazy on it <laughs> plus it's fun to crank on your whammy bar that <laughs> sounded bad another place you do not want to miss finger vibrato in this case is when you hit the third string 12th fret during this particular run <laughs> Now I held it out longer there on purpose so you could really see it, but uh, it's right here with the first finger. So I'm doing my uh, BB King vibrato that I teach on the website. It's where you kind of feel like you're doing this with your hand. And it comes in super handy and it sounds great. If you don't throw it in, it, it's missing something. Here's without it. A little bit flat, right? Now let's throw it in. I'm telling you so much about getting to the higher levels of guitar or paying attention to those tiny microscopic things. So uh, don't skip that vibrato, please. Oops, here. I played in a band a while ago where we would end the show with this song. And it was a lot of fun because I knew at the end I got to do the old thumb pluck. There are some videos of Stevie just hitting it with a pick, but in the recording you could hear the percussiveness of a pluck sound. So what you do is after you hit your final chord in your rock and the whammy bar, Reach down, take your thumb, and just yank on that E string and pull it out. To do a little slap guitar there. So I used to pick it, and it would sound like this. Okay, that was a little bit boring, right? Now I'm gonna give it a good thumb plucking. Here we go. Kind of jumps out and attacks you. Okay, now for the fun part, or not so fun for you guys that have to listen to it. I'm going to try to play the solo again, but this time I'm going to make all the mistakes that we just talked about. All of the, all eight of them if I can. And uh, see how it sounds. Here we go. probably hear that it's a little dull kind of uninspired when you don't do the things we were talking about in this lesson so uh, it's kind of funny that these little things could do so much for a solo so try to incorporate them maybe one at a time and see if it could bring your solo to, from here to here that's kind of my goal for everybody just to get that extra gear when you need it and to uh, really be able to dig in and feel something when you play Stevie Ray Vaughan solos because I know I always do uh, usually it's sore fingertips actually but all right guys thanks for watching we'll do another one of these soon so far we've done David Gilmore and now SRV uh, go ahead and throw me some requests in the comment section and we'll catch you later thanks bye